Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm in the studio once again with Steve, and we're talking about a really cool animated tilt shift effect that you've managed to pull off with a couple of different tools. Right. Well, the first tool we started off with was the GoPro helicopter, the Phantom 2. Is it a GoPro helicopter? No, it's, it? it's a Phantom 2. It's not. A, did I say GoPro? Yes. No. Well, it's a GoPro like camera oh, mounted okay. to it. Okay. Okay. It's got a cam. So it's one of these drones that everybody's the, flying now that you can shoot uh, aerial photography with release. Really right. In fact, oh, here's a picture. Is. So there it is. There's the Phantom 2, and this isn't uh, have a GoPro camera, but the Phantom the. The company actually has their own version of the camera. They have a camera, or you could use a GoPro with it. Exactly. Okay. So there it is. And what we did is we we used the the, the camera and we went around our, our ranch to uh, to shoot some stuff. Like here's my daughter Rachel. We used the camera to um, to essentially track her. Look, look how smooth that that tracking shot. That was a little camera. Amazing. And you didn't add any stabilization. No or anything stabilization after the fact. in it. Well, he bought this thing called a uh, motorized gimbal that will control. Uh, okay. the camera to keep it stable. But you didn't, in Final Cut, you didn't add any stabilization. No, didn't. Really nice. Uh, very, very nice. And um, why am I saying that? Because we shot some stuff of our ranch, and there's our horses there, and you can see the helicopter. You can see the shadow of the helicopter Oh, there, I see it the, moving along. The, that's the, the shadow of the helicopter. Okay. Right. Now, the thing about tilt shift, and uh, a lot of you, um, forgive me for kind of this uh, very simple description, a lot of you are already familiar with tilt shift, but basically it's the photographic equivalent of basically making a wide angle image and the subject with it look really like miniature. Like they're miniatures, like it's a model. Like so it's you're a taking model. Some, so you're gonna take this shot, this wide shot of your ranch and make it look like it's a model. Make it look like this. Here's the finished one here. Here's the, and, um, let me uh, go command shift uh, F so you can see. This is this, this is the shot with the GoPro and I use the Slice X um, plugin to essentially create this really cool tilt shifty effect uh, wow. of my ranch. Wow. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. okay? The GoPro is, pr I keep saying GoPro. It's the Phantom 2 <laughs> with their camera. The camera it doesn't yeah. matter what doesn't it matter. is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> so let's let's start by re removing um, the helicopter shadow. Oh, because it's a little distracting. Little seeing dis that yeah, across, you see a little. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the Slice X category, and it's a series of different. Uh, Effects you can apply. Okay, to so Slicex is a plugin for Final Cut Pro from CoreMelt. From CoreMelt, it's okay. about ninety nine dollars. Okay, okay, it's tremendous what it does. You don't have to jump into another application. You essentially can create masks and track them. And you did an earlier um, episode where you tracked the cupcake to, to light. So you use it kind of for color correction. Basically, in that case. I used it. I used the cupcake, and I forget what episode it was to to put additional light on. Okay, the cupcake. Uh, but there's some, some other ones in here I haven't shown. That's what, yes. what I want to show. So got it. This one's this one here. Um, you'll notice uh, it's called object remover. Ah. Okay, the one I did last time was a color correct shape mask. Yes, this yes. one is object, object remover. remover. So I want to just grab that plugin and I just drag it on top of the clip. Okay, so it's like an this. effect that's in your effects browser. It's an okay. effect, so right? Apply so it to the clip. just going to apply it to the clip. And mm -hmm. as soon as I do, SliceX loads up and you get this little interface. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a really nice little interface. And I'm going to move the play into the beginning of the clip so I could see uh, the helicopter. I'm going to start. I'm going to start getting rid of the helicopter shadow. to shadow. So, uh -huh. um, one thing that you might find handy is to move some of these tools out of the way. Oh, you can uh, just drag that palette around. You just around. move mm -hmm. that palette around. Okay. And as I mentioned in that one episode, you just choose a shape. You can, you can use a, you know, a hexagonal shape or a, you know, oval. That's just or a square. polygon, right? Just, just a polygon. A polygon. Exactly. Uh -huh. So what I want to do is I want to, um, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit here. There I go. Zoom in. Trying to get trying to get rid of some of these these interface items here, um, they kind of get in the way of what you want to do. But I'll just try to. I'm gonna. There we go. I'm going to get the shape and just drag out a box around that little helicopter shadow right mm -hmm. there, that little phantom. Okay. So I have this box, and in a moment you'll see little control points, which I can then. Um, if, I can resize, I can grab the control points, move them around, I can change the shape, I can, if I hold down the shift key, I can scale uniformly um, uh, that particular mask. Okay, so I'm essentially what I'm doing is I'm isolating that uh, shadow of that Phantom 2 sure. with, with the mask. Okay. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to clone or I want to grab a piece of pixel somewhere else in the frame to fill this area in the frame. To so like what you would do in Photoshop for a still image, he's right. gonna replace those pixels with other nearby pixels. With nearby pixels, okay. exactly. To do that, I wanna press Command Forward, open up the inspector. And you'll notice over here, there's this thing called, at the top, object remover. You have what's called 
from X offset from Y offset. Okay, so you can move a so little you bit can, in X right, and Y. Right, so you can mm -hmm. move them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move X offset over a little bit. I'm just gonna move. But you know what I'm gonna do as well, because you can't see, I'm gonna click hide, because all these, inter one thing I'm, I, I'm not crazy about is that all these UI elements, right? Oh, I just wanna get, get so. Get so way. what I'm gonna uh, do is I'm gonna go ahead and use, notice the green square. Yes. That's what I'm, I'm creating the offset. I'm saying now yeah. I wanna grab pixels from over here. Notice I'm in the black section. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna, I wanna grab pixels from over here. Just a little bit next to it. Now, yeah. yeah, just so you can see, just a little bit next to it. The, the controls are a little persnickety. You just kind of, you don't wanna go too much from them. You just kind of drag. If you go too far, the, the box just goes. But anyway, um, I wanna do a before and after. You can see, Look, pretty much the and helicopter the is it's just gone. This is where is it? Okay. Yep. Now I can go ahead and turn this off by clicking this box. You can see before and then after. There's it. There's it on. There's it off. Okay. Right? And it got right. rid of it on right. that frame. On that frame. Now I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a rough idea about keyframing here. So I'm gonna say show mask editor. Uh huh. And what I want to do is turn on keyframe, and to do that, you, you click this little key button here, this little key button. So you're gonna keyframe that mask to follow the shadow? You're gonna keyframe the mask to follow the shadow. Okay, okay. and on for certain objects, you could use the tracking that's built in, but for this object, keyframes is, keyframing is actually easier? It, yes, um, there is a tracker built in, so you can, you can actually tra track an object, but because this little shadow is moving across all these different varying uh, shades, kind of random, ways. Uh -huh. the, the track, Gets it has trouble with it. It has trouble okay. with it. So, tracking works in some instances. In some instances, it doesn't really work that well okay. at all. So, I find keyframing is the best solution. So, you start, you move the plate when you want to start keyframing. And in this case, you go over to the position and you say, right, you know what, I want to just start, I want to keyframe the position. In other words, where the mask is, you would add a keyframe. Yep. Okay. And again, I'm not going to take the time to go through, I'm just going to move the playhead into a new place so we can see maybe, uh, we can see the. Yeah, we can see it again. You can uh -huh. see it again. So there it is. And I just, all I need to do now is move that uh, mask. Let's see, command minus. Yeah. There we go, yeah. Yeah, um, so, so what I, what I want to do is just grab this box, and it's, um, it's because I already have the first keyframe set, you have to be careful where you click. You got to kind of click in the center here. Okay, so I just grab the box and just move it to a new location, and a keyframe is recorded right there. Okay, just by moving it sets a keyframe. Just, just by moving sets a keyframe. So all you really do is move the playhead, then move the mask to a new location, okay. and it records it as a keyframe. And generally, if something's moving in a pretty straightforward path, you could set a keyframe at the beginning and the end, yeah. and then go to the middle if you need to adjust it, right. but pretty quickly track the object. So, right, so let me go ahead and look at the next shot, because I've already took the time to uh, keyframe, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and I can say Command, uh, Shift, Z. Shift Z. And you'll notice in this shot, I've already took the time to keyframe it. I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of this. And, and you can see here that the shadow has pretty much essentially been removed. You, yep. If you really stare at it, you, you, can, at, you, can, you, can, see you it. can see that lighter area moving a little bit because the pixels have different, the dirt has different tonalities. Yeah. yeah. And the thing, the thing about this is you have to um, just keep in your mind, the idea isn't to eliminate something entirely. It's to, to uh, cause people to not notice it. Yeah, pull in their attention words, away from it. Pull yeah. their attention away from it. The subject is a horse's. They're not going to be looking at the ground. Yeah, looking around for right. that thing, unless right. unless you're like us and you're staring at it. Yes, yep. exactly. Okay, so, so, so now the I've, I've removed the shadow. Now I want to add another slice X effect. Another instance of another, the same effect. Okay. A, a slightly different. So I'm going to use this one called the depth of field shape mask. Ah. So I'm just going to grab that depth of field shape mask. I'm going to drop, drop it right on the clip. Mm -hmm and I've added another shape mask, and then this time I'm gonna, again, well, I'm gonna choose the same rectangle, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw out essentially what amounts to a box, okay? And you'll notice first it does masking inside. The opposite but of I'm what you want. The opposite I want, so I'm gonna invert the mat. So yes. in the inspector, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to, uh, to invert shape. Yes. So there we go. So already we're getting that tilt shifty kind of a feel, feel to it. So uh -huh. I'm gonna stretch this box out, so it goes all the way across the frame, and uh, I have to decide, you know, where I want the mask placement. I can I can change the size of it with these little control points here. And I'm assuming you can feather it too. You if can, you don't want oh yeah, there's feathering controls. Here. There's position control, controls. And I can also keyframe this because the thing about this Go, I said GoPro camera. The thing about this <laughs> Phantom Two is that 
you'll notice the horses don't stay in the same place relative to the framing of yes, the horses. So what, what I would want to do is keyframe. And you do the same thing you did to keyframe the shape. Exact same thing. Okay. You could set it, you just move the plate where you want to start um, keyframing. The and then you go in, into here and then you would set a- Set an initial keyframe. Set initial keyframe for that mask position. Mm -hmm. Move the playhead to a new location. And then all I need to do is move the framing uh, to where the new location is, it'll record that as a keyframe. Got it, and then okay. we'll animate the mask right. between those keyframes. Right, and so the last thing I want to do is add kind of a hyper-saturated look to the clip to make it look like, you know, little miniatures look like they're painted. They're hand painted, right. little, so, little handmade miniature, miniature models, yeah. Right, so I'm gonna go into um, the color board and I'm just gonna kind of crank up the saturation there. Okay, there we go, Woo. There we go. Man, look so, at that pop, look so at that just, red horse. Just kind of, I know, just kind of pop. Beautiful. So, so we just did two things. We eliminated, we tracked and removed an object by, by animating yes. a mask, and then we added a separate mask that controlled uh, depth of field. Yes. So it added a focus at the bottom of the frame and the top, which, which creates the illusion of these miniature objects. And that's cool that that depth of field thing's built right into Slice X to let you do that. Right. Very unusual use of Slice X for tracking some very interesting. Well, a lot of people are shooting yeah. with these helicopters now, yeah. and this is a really great, you can do pretty interesting um, uh, effects. I actually like doing this more than, I like seeing this more than I like to see the regular GoPro, or I said it again. <laughs> Phantom. You know what, go buy a Phantom, rip the camera off the bottom, and put a GoPro 3 on the bottom. Sorry, actually it's not available yet. Yeah. Okay. Soon, all right. But it's a, it's beautiful, it's just a really, really beautiful effect. It's great, and an unusual way to use it. So check out uh, SliceX and also TrackX or two different type of tracking things from Cormelt, cormelt.com. Um, and uh, thank you for watching MacBreak Studio. Thank you, Steve. Uh, check us out at rippletraining.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or like us on Facebook, Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And thank you once again for watching MacBreak Studio.